Good morning, mammalians, and welcome to Wall Street Wildlife. Uh, there is crazy stuff happening in the market just overnight. Today is Valentine's Day, but on the 13th of February, ride hail company Lyft misstated a key number in their earnings. Shares were up 60% in the aftermarket and then came crashing down again before the start of day today. In this episode, we'll tell you why, what went wrong, and we'll try and figure out, was this market manipulation? So Lyft reported their earnings and announced that their margins increased by 500 basis points. That sounds like a lot. Margin, so margins are good, right? You want lots of margins because that's like the difference between, for, say, for example, the money you get in the door and then the money that you retain. There's lots of different margins. In this particular case, it was Lyft's EBITDA margin, which will probably be too complex to explain today, but an important number in terms of the value of the company and its future earnings. Yeah, so I think of margins as the quality of a business. If, uh, and a good example for me is supermarkets. Supermarkets have lots of goods, right, coming in and leaving, but they don't actually get to keep much of that money because the cost of the goods is high. They can only charge uh, a reasonable amount above the cost, and that's a low-margin business. So they have to sell a whole lot of stuff to keep a teeny tiny bit of it, right? So when a business in its earnings reports that its basis points have gone up by 500, as Badger was saying, that sounds like an awful lot. So it suggests to investors that the business all of a sudden is keeping a lot more of its money, making it uh, a better business. And usually there's an implication. If it's keeping a lot more of its money, that means it's doing something that competitors can't match because usually it's a cutthroat kind of thing and margins tend to go down rather than up. But if you're a younger company, your margins will go up because you become more efficient, you're getting bigger scale. A younger company, as it becomes more mature, its margins will expand. Right. So the market, hearing that the basis points went up by 500, shot the stock up something like 60% until it became clear that, oops, the chief financial officer accidentally added an extra zero. So the actual number was 50 basis points. Now, there is a nuance to this because the mistake was in a press release rather than in their like official financial statement. If they've made this mistake in their official financial statements, a ton of people have gone very, very badly wrong, including their auditors. And a lot of people have their feet to the fire. You could almost get the view, though, maybe their, like their investor relations guys, some intern has just like thrown the, pe the press release together, put it out, has fat fingered 50 into 500, but it's still the CFO's accountability to make sure that that's accurate. And as you say, Christoph, that resulted in a huge spike in the valuation, which came crashing back down on the earnings call overnight when uh, Erin, the CFO, clarified that there'd been an error when queried by analysts as to how have Lyft done this, how have Lyft increased their profitability so dramatically. Yeah, so my sense is that this is not market manipulation. There could have been some bad actors. We can't rule that out. But in general, it is possible to make mistakes. And I think the law covers the difference. It's nearly impossible to think that somebody would overlook that and not catch on to it or ask a follow-up question. So th there's no way the truth would not out. There are a bunch of numbers on financial statements that you could kind of get away with for a long time that require a lot of deep sleuthing. This is not one of them. So it seems exactly. to me like, like a true human mistake. I think the better question is, why use basis points at all? That's a great question. Like, what the hell is a basis point? Why can't we just say percentages? It makes more sense. Yeah. Oh, you want me to answer that? <laughs> I, I, I can answer it if you like. <laughs> yeah. Well, one basis point is, actually, let me say it differently, one percentage is equal to 100 basis points. So this is actually quite intuitive. Basis points allow for more granularity 
it lets you really get inside the number where, where it's possible to record each teeny tiny uptick in change. And that's useful often for several reasons. They're also really helpful because they actually do remove ambiguity, even though they kind of make things a bit more complex. So let me give you an example, right? Let's say you had a mortgage on your house, which was say 2%. And if I said to you, like, say I'm the bank and I need to put your mortgage rate up from 2% to 2.5% because of interest rates. Uh, so if I said to you, well, your interest rate's going up by 25% because it was 2% and now it's 2.5%, you'd be like, holy hell, my interest rate's 27%. That could be quite confusing. So basis points remove that ambiguity. If your mortgage rate is going up by 50 basis points, which coincidentally is what Lyft were trying to say with their EBITDA margin, that means it's going from 2% to two and a half percent. It kind of removes that potential conclusion. Yeah, and another reason why people talk in basis points is there are corners in the market, some of them quite big corners, like the bond market, where the teeny tiniest move in either direction makes a big difference because it's signaling shifts. It's like uh, signaling tailwinds. So even say a 0.05% move, in which case this would be five basis points, matters. And it's easier. I think it makes more sense to say five basis points than 0.05. So the bond market is a, a great example of the difference in some of the bond auctions. Five, 10 basis points make a big difference. And that's why it's used in, in that world. And I'll tell you where I run into basis points all the time, and it's quite helpful. If I'm comparing a company I'm invested in, where it is today against where it was last year or three years or five years ago, if you're looking at something like a margin, something that's measured in percentages, well, it's easier to see. If something's gone up by 20 basis points, you know it's moved by 0.2%. It's improved a small amount. It helps you get a clearer sense of how your company is performing, whether it's improving its margins or, or losing its margins, as you said earlier, perhaps due to competition eroding the market and driving a race to the bottom. Right. So in the end, not the end of the world for Lyft, but quite a big error. And f there's some people that's, <laughs> that profited wildly and some people that probably lost a lot of money uh, because of the short term shenanigans and price action. Seems to me like a uh, human error. Uh, but boy, what an error. Yeah, indeed. For the stock valuation to swing 60 percent and back again overnight. That's a big, big error probably not something we've seen before. Um, I think we'll probably see consequences of this, even though technically they were within the regulations, they didn't do anything illegal. As you say, it was probably a fat fingered error and it wasn't in the official numbers, it was in the press release. I think we're probably gonna see legal cases against Lyft, unfortunately, and we'll probably see someone in their financial team or investor relations team uh, taking the flack for this one. Yeah. So I hope that was interesting, I hope that was useful. Quick snippet bonus episode this week if you enjoyed our content then subscribe below like and subscribe <laughs> hit us with a hundred basis points of <laughs> subscribe button mashing <laughs> <laughs> we need to increase our subscribe account by a thousand basis points urgently <laughs> be careful it's a jungle out there <laughs> A reminder that the people on this program may hold positions in the companies that are mentioned. Buying and selling stock carries financial risk, which could include loss of capital. The views in this program should not be taken as personalized advice. Before acting on any of the information provided, listeners are encouraged to consult a financial or tax professional.